Okay, Bob, why did you become dean in the first place? Well, in those days, uh, one was elected as dean, mm -hmm. and um, it was clear that there was a lot of support for my candidacy, although I didn't put my name forward at first. Right. And so um, I took the opportunity. Okay, and what were your priorities in the role? External and internal. Mm -hmm. One was to ensure that uh, the brand of Warwick Business School uh, was better known. We had a more media presence. We built up a strong uh, academic uh, reputation, mm -hmm. uh, but we were very had little in the sense of uh, media coverage in those days. Uh, internally, it was getting um, an infrastructure to support the business school. That meant computing support, there was no web presence, we were reliant on the central university for services like VR, yeah. uh, like computing. So those needed to be built up internally. Okay, and fundraising? Fundraising really didn't come until later. Mm -hmm. um, I was much more concerned at that stage of ensuring that um, uh, our reputation was being built up. Um, Fundraising really came in towards the latter stages of, of uh, my deanship. Mm -hmm. um, when I was concerned that uh, in order to stay ahead, we needed to keep our student-staff ratio down. Right. Um, and of course, we were reliant very much on uh, the university in terms of our funding. Mm -hmm. um, and in those days, it was quite a centralized regime. Uh, we had not as much autonomy as perhaps one does these days. Right. And how did you go about formulating and implementing strategy? Um, trying to identify opportunities, discussing with colleagues, hearing what colleagues had to say, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, one felt that one needed to provide some leadership uh, in terms of putting forward ideas mm -hmm. uh, rather than simply waiting to hear what others were saying. So you had away days? We had away days. Um, sometimes those were supported and sometimes less so. Mm -hmm. In those days, um, there was not a, so much of a sense of Warwick Business School, but a, but a collection of entities, mm -hmm. whether they be research centres or programmes. Um, in those days, we called it the, the baronesses. And okay. uh, a number of barons used to um, ensure that their own endeavours were mm -hmm. uh, uh, Prioritised. Okay. Yeah. And how did the deanship impact on your own scholarship? Well, of course it had a huge impact, but I came into academia to be an academic, funnily mm -hmm. enough. Um, and these major administrative tasks um, seemed to follow me around. Um, after I'd, I'd, I'd left um, Warwick, I eventually went over to the United States to become a provost of the university there, Bentley University in, in Boston. Um, but I still wanted to keep up as a, my, my research and, and scholarship up, so I'd like to be in the classroom mm -hmm. and I'd like to research. So how did it impact? Yes. Um, there aren't enough hours in the day, but you try to maximise the number of mm -hmm. hours that you do use um, for your research and for your scholarship. Okay, and relationships with the central university, how, how do you view those? They're pretty key for such a, a business school as, as Warwick. Mm -hmm. um, and of course they vary from the regime that is uh, at the centre of the university. In my, in my day it was pretty centralised and mm -hmm. that meant that one had to really work on those relationships. In a subsequent um, uh, regime, uh, things were much more decentralised. And yeah. I think in those, in, those, uh, in those circumstances you try to optimise the opportunities for autonomy. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the key challenges facing deans or full-service university-based business schools? Well, I think there are two things. One is the relationships that we were just talking about with the centre. Mm -hmm. um, and, and being a part of a wider university. And those are real opportunities to do some cross-disciplinary work and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, but in addition, it's taking advantage of the opportunities that um, can occur as, as part of a university. Clearly, if you're a full-service business school, you have a range of activities taking place mm -hmm. at all levels. 
um, from executive education to all the academic programs to the various research centres and so on. It's really difficult to be a leader in every, every single one of those. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand it's ensuring that you maintain your leadership and grow leadership in certain aspects of one's endeavour, uh, but at the same time ensuring quality of everything that one delivers. Okay, thank you. Pleasure.